All right. So here are a few more examples um, where surface integrals turn out to be more straightforward than you might think. Right? So we've got a sphere of radius A centered at the origin, oriented outward. Okay? Now, in this context here, the little r, this little r is this sort of standard radial vector, right? x, y, z. Um, now, the reason I've introduced that is that on a sphere, the radial vector is the normal vector, right? Uh, so here's our sphere. Right? And at any point, the normal vector is the same thing as the vector you know, pointing from the origin, right? They're parallel, right? So, so unit normal is, is going to be simply n equals r over the magnitude of r. Um, and there's one more simplification that you can make here, right? Um, so the vector r is not constant, right? r is not a constant vector. Um, it varies from point to point, right? We move all the way around the sphere. Uh, but its magnitude is because we're, we're on a sphere of radius a, yeah? Um, so we know, we know that the magnitude of r everywhere is equal to a, okay? All right. So with those simplifications in mind, we can fairly quickly answer some of these integration problems, right? So for part A, right, for part A, we're going to do the integral over S. This is going to be another one where you might find it easier to work with this form of the surface integral because then you don't have to worry about, you know, if you can f see the answer without parametrizing, then save yourself the trouble of parametrizing. Um, so what we would have here is that f dot n right, this is r dot r over magnitude of r. Right, but r dot r is just the magnitude of r squared so this is just the magnitude of r, and we know that the magnitude of r is a. So this is simply the integral over the sphere of a, right, with respect to s. And so a is just a constant. So this is a constant times, times the surface area. It's going to be a times the surface area, we saw that in an earlier video, it's 4 pi r, 4 pi a squared, so we get 4 pi a cubed, right? If we were doing part b, same idea, well now f dot n, well, f is itself the unit vector, right? So this is the unit normal dotted with itself, Right, it's n dot n, it's 1, okay, so we're integrating 1, right, so the integral in this case is just the area of the sphere, 4 pi a squared. All right, simple enough, right? This last one, uh, um, um, I should warn you. Be careful about setting things equal to constants because pretty soon we're going to be looking at, you know, divergence theorem, Stokes theorem. We're taking derivatives, right? Um, one, of the, one of the easy kind of pitfalls, mistakes to make is you set things equal to a constant and then you take the derivative and, of course, you get zero. Um, but, you know, these are only constants once you restrict them to the surface of the sphere. So if you're, if you're looking at a vector field which is defined everywhere, not just on the sphere, the derivative is not going to be zero, right? The magnitude is not constant. It just happens to be constant when we restrict to the surface that we're interested in. Um, something to be careful about. Last one. Um, now, this last one, the reason I put this in 
um, is that this is a very important type of vector field in physics, right? Because this is a vector field where when you compute the magnitude, right, the magnitude is 1 over the magnitude of r squared. Because you're going to get the magnitude of r over the magnitude of r cubed. Right? Um, so this, this is the type of vector field that you're dealing with for all of these uh, forces in physics that follow these so-called inverse square laws. Um, gravity is one such force. Electrical force is another example. Uh, Here's what, the, uh, here's what the electric field looks like um, if the electric field is generated by a point charge, Q. Okay? So Q is the charge. It's Q over 4 pi. Uh, this epsilon naught is this universal physical constant, the, uh, I think, uh, permittivity of free space. Um, or is it permeability? I think it's permittivity. Um, so this is a constant out front times this vector field, right? So if we, if we know how to deal with this one, then... All we got to do is multiply by a constant. Um, we'll, uh, we'll come back to this one and we'll, we'll try to understand exactly why that makes sense as the electric field for a point charge. Um, we'll look at something called, called Gauss's law, which relates to this. Okay. Um, so for the last one, f dot n, right, we have r over the magnitude of r cubed dotted with r over the magnitude of r. That gives us this inverse square, right? Because we'll get the magnitude of r squared up top, magnitude of r to the fourth power on the bottom. We do some cancellation. We get to there. We get 1 over a squared. Okay. That means that the integral in this case it's 1 over a squared times the area of our sphere 4 pi a squared we get 4 pi on the nose. Uh, notice that it doesn't depend on the radius uh, this is going to be important later on. So, so essentially, the proof of Gauss's law, and we'll, we'll, I think we'll have time to sketch a proof. Um, Gauss's law in physics depends fairly essentially on the fact that when you're integrating an inverse square um, vector field over, over a sphere, the result doesn't depend on the radius. Okay, It's independent of radius. We'll, we'll see why this matters. Um, a few videos from now. Um, all right, so to get us ready to talk about that, we're going to move on. We're going to introduce the first of our, uh, of our last two fundamental theorems, uh, which is the divergence theorem. And then we'll look at a couple of examples with it.